The following podcast is by Dr. Sean Weiss, President of Senior Health and Wellness Group on the Answers for Elders Radio Network. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio. And we are here with Dr. Sean Weiss, who is a licensed physical therapist and founder and president of the Senior Health and Wellness Group, which is an educational consulting company that helps educate and helps families navigate through their later life care. And I have known Dr. Weiss for a very long time, and I'm thrilled that you were here. And we are spending this hour talking about various aspects of you know, later life and what we're um, dealing with right now. And we spent our first segment talking a lot about just summer safety, which I think is a big deal. And, but this segment, Sean, I'm so glad you're back because we're flipping over and talking about family caregivers. And I don't think we're, we could ever have too much content on this. I think it's one of the most important topics we could ever um, address. So I'm so glad that you're here and welcome Thank back you. to the Thank show. Thank you. Thank you. I was really yeah. excited to be here. Well, we're excited. So tell us a little bit about through this pandemic and, you know, what's going on, what's happening with family caregivers these days? Oh my goodness. This, and just like you said, this could not be a more important topic right now than it has Very been true. in the last year and a half. And we see it daily. Um, caregivers, you know, not just talking about caregivers, in the medical community, because certainly mm -hmm. our hospital workers, nurses, resident mm -hmm. care aides, nursing home, assisted living, home health clinicians have certainly experienced burnout. But really the focus on families and family caregivers who maybe have had to start taking a new role and take yeah. care of mom or dad or grandma or grandpa during this COVID pandemic. And mm -hmm. we really are seeing a lot of burnout, not just physical burnout, but emotional and mental exhaustion. Very much um, so. Yeah, we're seeing it all, all over and it's such an important topic. It really is. It um, is. People are, you know, maybe if I had to move a loved one into their home, people have taken on new roles in addition to their jobs. And, you know, maybe those demands are just uh, over, they're daunting. They're mm -hmm. overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, to these caregivers. Uh, they might not have the knowledge or the background or the support system to take on these roles. And, you know, just the pressure of wanting to take good care and promote good health and happiness um, on their loved ones. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just, if you can imagine the pressure and the pressure that has been on these caregivers during this pandemic, it's just been um, amazing. Well, and I think, uh, you know, I can relate to everything that you say, because as you know, I took care of my mother for the last six yes. years of her life. And um, the expectations that I put on myself were uh, very unrealistic. I see yeah. it, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but mm -hmm. when you're in the thick yeah. of it, you don't necessarily realize um, how you're over committing, how you're burning yourself out, how your whole life is going to hell around you. Excuse my French. Yes. But it, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like you don't have, I think, real awareness from a independent perspective of where, you know, what your perspective should be on your life. And I think um, so often what I have learned with family caregivers is they are often the quote unquote sacrificial lamb of the family. <clears throat> it's somebody that, oh, she'll take care of it. And usually it's a woman. So I'm using right. that as, as an intentional thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, the rest of the family, just, they go on and do their lives normally. Yep. And there's resentment that builds up in family. So there's this whole other piece that happens within that right. person. And oftentimes the family caregiver doesn't know how to set boundaries because again, they've, they've been used to taking everything on. And, and so <clears throat> I know that there's a lot of listeners that listen to our show that absolutely are taking care of loved ones and they are amazing and they're angels and mm -hmm. they are probably one of my greatest passions that we you know that we do advocate for them and that you guys do have a right to have a life <laughs> you shouldn't feel exactly guilty for right. it it's ex you're exactly right and and you look at the symptoms of caregiver burnout yeah. and, and it's all around us right now um much much like the symptoms of anxiety and depression are they're mm -hmm. very similar symptoms i mean you look at some of our caregivers yes who have developed uh, resentment and irritability yeah. and you know they're withdrawing from family and friends they're not taking care of their own health uh, they may have they're not sleeping uh, they are using alcohol or medications. 
And, you know, certainly we want to look for people who um, just need to talk to somebody, whether that's professionally or find a friend or a loved one uh, to communicate with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a daunting task and you're not alone <laughs> and you need to really, you know, I've always said, you know, you cannot take care of somebody else if you are not taking care of yourself. Um, it's easier it's, said than done though. It totally because is. So, I, so oftentimes I will say, you know, you need to learn to say, no, you need to set boundaries. You need to do mm -hmm. all these things. And they look at me and they say, yeah, but there's, I don't have anybody else to take care of my mom. You say all these things and it's one mm -hmm. thing. So, you know, I can appreciate that to every single person that's listening to this show yeah. that may feel, uh, you know, a bit overwhelmed and, and we hear you. Mm -hmm. And find there are communities out there, support groups. There are, and and believe me, reach out to us on Answers for Elders. We're happy to, um, you know, to give you guys some resources and things like that of various organizations. Um, mm -hmm. That you, you, your loved ones should never ever um, dominate your life because that mm -hmm. will happen very not you know it will be detrimental to your life over the long term and i'm living proof of that so it, it, absolutely just know that. yeah absolutely and we're seeing that and you have to be able to set your own boundaries you have to know what your physical and emotional mm -hmm. limits are mm -hmm. uh, and what's best for your family member mm -hmm. and you know set a time for yourself talk to a professional uh, make sure that you're staying healthy and exercising and eating correctly all of these things are so, so critical. Uh, find somebody that you trust. Like you right. said, trusting somebody and not taking the whole burden on yourself. Delegating tasks. I mean, there's yeah. just, the list goes on and on. And you're right. Um, all your local, I mean, across the country, your local area on aging offices have you know links and your community centers and your senior centers right. have links for support groups uh, for caregivers. And they're so for beneficial. Churches. Church, um, church groups have great um, resources. So again, mm -hmm. reach out to your community that we are here. And I think the other thing that's really important is that it's perfectly acceptable to set a schedule. Um, I know that was one, probably Sean, one of my hardest things that I ever did with my mom, because my mom was very demanding. Um, we had find, moved her down here to assisted living. She knew nobody, right? So mm -hmm. I felt this overwhelming need that I had to be there every day. And one of the things that when she went into assisted living, because I was so emotionally wrapped up in it, I was going like every day. And of course I was juggling a full-time job and all of those things, but here's what happened. I'm very grateful. The nurse of the assisted living community said, Suzanne, I want you to go home. And I want you to let your mother stay here for a week and do not visit. And that was one week. It was like, oh my gosh, she needs to adjust. She yes. needs to know that you're okay. Yes. And it's okay. Well, and, and it's okay for you to call her. It's okay mm -hmm. for you to check in on her, but I don't want you to visit. And I was right. shocked, but yes. you know what it taught me? She was just fine at the end of the week. Yes. And the other thing that happened, I thought, and then the next thing was, you know what? I am going to set a schedule. Yes. And so I did set a schedule and, you know, my mom for her to just say, I need some things in the store. Great mom. I'll do that when I come see you on Tuesday. Yeah. And that's oh, absolutely so okay. critical. And that makes such a world of difference for <laughs> both the, both the older yeah. doll and the family member, yeah. and, you know, utilize, utilize outside services too. Mm -hmm. That's another important thing, whether it's non-medical services or skilled home health that gives you a break and um, let the professionals come in sitters, somebody they can come with help with cooking and housekeeping and give you a break to get out of the house and go run errands. Simple. Well, and like you that. mentioned home health, which is mm -hmm. so important. And I, and there's the good news. Medicare pays for home health, Absolutely. everyone. Mm -hmm. And if your loved one is a fall risk, you should t definitely talk to your loved one's physician and have home health authorized. It is cost you nothing and help them with their balance, help them to, so that they're not a fall risk in their house. And, and not, those yeah. are services that are available to right now that cost you nothing. Right. It is a Medicare expense. Yes. That and think about you couple the fact that you're taking care of somebody, their activity levels are down. So not only do you want to increase their physical activity, but you've, the, the amount of uh, seniors that have had a cognitive decline um, mm -hmm. is so significant and it's, it's heartbreaking, honestly. Um, home health helps with that. We have you know, occupational therapy come in, 
and establish baselines and educate the loved ones on how to transition and make these adjustments in their care. Um, skilled and non-skilled home health are just incredibly valuable resources right now. Yeah, and and I I will say also, um, just uh, just a side note is that we need to be mindful to prevent caregiver mm -hmm. burnout. And that a part of it is you may yep. not be feeling burned out right now, but there's a lot of things that yep. can happen in your life. Again, your life could spin out of control tomorrow and you don't realize it. it burnout just doesn't happen all of a sudden. It's an, mm -hmm. it's an overtime scenario. And so, um, Sean, would you share with us a little bit about what we can do to prevent that? Right. And you want to start by just setting yourself up for success, not just setting up your loved one for success, but you personally, you want to have a routine. You mm -hmm. want to take care of your health first and foremost. So exercising and eating well, know who your contacts are, who can mm -hmm. you help delegate tasks to? Do you have other loved ones? Do you have a son or a daughter that could help a granddaughter that can come in and sit with grandma for a few hours a week, mm -hmm. start making a schedule. Like you said that I can't stress that enough of knowing and planning ahead during your week of time for yourself and time for your loved one mm -hmm. and allowing as many people, you know, that you can feel comfortable doing right now into your space so that you're not taking the whole brunt of that yourself. And not to be, you know, cliche, but it does take a village, everyone. Absolutely. You cannot do it on your own. And, and if anybody thinks that, you, you know, that you can, yep. they're wrong. Yep. Um, right. you know, your life is, has just as much value as anyone else's. And, mm -hmm. um, sadly, a lot of times caregivers forget that. So, right. um, we are very, very excited to be talking to Dr. Sean Weiss this hour and Sean, you're going to be right back right after this. And we're going to talk about fall prevention. We kind of touched on it this hour, but we're going to talk a lot about balance, mobility, and how to keep yourself safe in your home. Right back, right after this. We would like to thank you for listening to this podcast by Dr. Sean Weiss, CEO of Senior Health and Wellness Group, focusing on wellness and prevention strategies for seniors. As a fall prevention specialist, Dr. Weiss provides family support and education to keep your loved ones safe. You can learn more by visiting her website at www.seniorhealthandwellness.org.